fact, it was commented on about the um, price of the house. And I thought I'd talked about this before, but I thought I'd mention it again, how I came about buying the house uh, for 20,000 euros, which at the time was 19,000 pounds. Um, yeah, I'd, um, I'd come to France um, a couple of times and I'd looked uh, up north uh, in Normandy area uh, property. And uh, yeah, it just, you know, I didn't find anything that suited me. Plus I thought the weather was too like Britain. And I thought, well, if you're gonna be moving onto the continent, you might as well move to somewhere warmer. Anyway, so I shelved the idea for a while, about 18 months, and then I came looking again. I was determined to buy something, uh, just as a hobby. And um, I looked at five or six houses, all in a day. And um, yeah, this house, yeah, I've said this before, but I'll just sort of say again that if you want a cheap house, it's very, very unlikely to be listed um, on a website. Uh, well, it might be listed on a website like, uh, like the uh, real estate agent's um, website, but it's unlikely to be listed on a website like a big website like Rightmove or something like that because they cost a lot of money to advertise on. And if you're looking for a cheap house, there just isn't the money to advertise it. They're not going to spend thousands of pounds um, advertising, you know, a cheap house. They're just not going to do it. So you have to go into the office or you have to find out the um, website address of specific uh, estate agents. So you really need to do your research, find a, a good estate agent, find an area, find a big town in that area, and then find the estate agent, uh, real estate agent in that town, and then look for their website. Uh, as I say, it probably won't be listed on the big websites um, uh, like Clay France and, as I say, Right Move and Zoopla and all the others. It won't be, they won't be on there if you're looking for a cheap property. Uh, failing that, come to France and knock on everyone's door, you know, all the estate, uh, estate agents saying, have you got any cheap properties? And so what I did, um, I agreed with the estate agent to go for the afternoon house hunting. So uh, one of the girls at the office came out and she had some property and we just you know looked through the file in her car and she said well that's not far away that's not far away and everything was you know quite close by and I just looked at it and I was like well that's a complete ruin you know I had uh, a couple of things that were important to me were it needed to have a good roof and a working toilet that's the only two things well and some land uh, that I could play with and play in um, and so that was that was my specifics really pretty you know yeah, easy really um but it wasn't that easy it turns out uh because they wanted to try and get rid of some of the ruins that uh, they had on their files and i knew this was going to be a hobby so there was no point me coming to france and staying somewhere that was completely wrecked do you know what i mean i needed some starting point anyway so i looked through the file and there was about five or six properties uh, in this pile of papers that she had and we just went and looked at them and I kind of knew that the last one this one was going to be the one I just kind of knew it's, it's strange honey it? funny how it works like that and it was <laughs> got a sightseeing aeroplane uh, flying over I think someone on a lesson um, this is quite a good it's quite good uh, well spaced um, the Chiron with airports and you do get pilots learning to fly and they have to fly from airport to airport, don't they? Um, anyway, where was I? So when I looked at this property, I kind of, I kind of knew uh, it was, it was in a mess. It had, it had been abandoned. Uh, the guy that lived here uh, sadly went into hospital, and then ended up in a care home. He was uh, 90 years old, and he'd lived in the house for 65 years. And uh, yeah, he was in really poor health. And um, yeah, he, he, he later uh, he later died. Um, but yeah, he, he just needed rid of the house and it had been on the market in this estate agents for nearly seven years. And it was, it just had to, it had to be gone. You know, they just wanted rid of it. Um, and it was on for 33,000 euros. Uh, and I thought, well, knowing they just want to get rid of it, I'll offer half. So I offered 16 and a half thousand euros uh, plus, uh, the estate agents fees and plus uh, the taxes and no tear fees that you have to pay in France 
Um, and they came back and said, no, 16 and a half is not enough. I was like, oh, OK. And I just left it for a couple of days. And I got an email back saying, but they'll accept 20. 20,000 euros. And I was like, yeah, OK. Yeah, it's, a, it's a deal. Yeah, 20,000 euros. I thought, uh, for a detached house in the middle of the French countryside with three acres of land uh, for 19,000 pounds, seemed like a bit of a bargain to me. So that's how I came by it. There's no, you know, there's nothing uh, more uh, fantastic about the story than that. Um, yeah, the only tip is, if you want a cheap house, you're going to have to come to France to find it. You're not going to find it online. You're very unlikely to find it online. Anyway, I've just spotted Dave. He's in my field again, which is kind of awesome. So that means that's two days running. That's two days running he's been in my field. Um... Morning, David. How's it hanging, fella? You're right in the shadow of the camera. Awesome. Um, bit damp, mate. Bit damp overnight. That's it. Yep, something to scratch on. I'll give you a carrot. Like a carrot this morning for breakfast. Anyway, just a quick uh, one from me this morning. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about the blue paint and, um, well, the purple paint in the kitchen. And um, I'll see you later.